Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the alert notification. So welcome to lecture number three in the competitive intelligence series. Today I want to look at um, the problem of technical focus and repetition. And I want to look at two features of the practice court and technical focus and repetition drills. I want to look at some of the fundamental problems of the practice court that I think fail to address the, um, the perennial problems. And one of those is parasitic processing. We call them perennial problems. That means they're always there, okay? So with um, parasitic processing, that's a perennial problem because it's, it can happen at any time. I want to look at two specific principles that Sterling and I have developed in the last three years. And we have developed a series of 12 principles that approach what I would call a, a, scient a scientific principle. Um, and I don't mean that to sound, this is what it is, as if it's been, uh, you know, we're handing it down. Um, uh, to our disciples, so, such as they are. That's not what I mean by the by the principles, but I think they are they are relatively scientific, and we've used data and a continual player, parental and coaches reports from the use of the art of winning method whilst we're developing competitive intelligence. So, in 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 developing our method, we have I think at least attempted to use the same, some kind of scientific method. And I want this to be a constant theme for Art of Winning Associates that I know some, some of you already are, and I hope that some of you will become so. So the two principles from the 12 principles set, what are they? So number one is 70, 20, 10. Okay. So we go shots one to four, shots five to eight, nine plus. So, um, all right, for these, these folks, we'll call it rally length. So that's it. The, but the pressure principle says that, that happens on ATP, tour down to club. Okay, very interesting. That's what Sterling found out. A lot of people knew that this was happening on the ATP Tour, but what they didn't do, which what Sterling did, was that he looked at junior players, he looked at club players, he looked at the men's and women's, and he looked at different surfaces. He spent a long time doing this, thousands of matches. Wow, look at that statistic. That's, that's the principle, that that reasserts itself at whatever level you're at. What is the second then? After that, the excitement of the first, we have numbered the, the, the second. So, the tactical determines the technical. Very important, I say from the outset, that that is not a principle that is anti-technical or anti-technique or anti-study of technique. Or say, somehow relegating it. Often we use, instead of the term determines, we, we, we say it affords. So the tactical affords the technical, or at least, it gives the technical a context. So I want to take the, the, this principle first and have a look at, uh, we, we're going to break this down a little. How do I win the point? Versus how do I strike the ball? That's kind of a, Reinterpreting that, so how do I win the point, the tactical, versus how do I strike the ball, the technical? Um, what tends to happen is that we focus on the technical, and by focus, I mean a kind of destructive focus. It's almost like a heuristic that I was talking about. So we go like, you've seen it with players that, oh, it's my back hands, that's the problem in the match. Or I'm not consistent enough because my back end is there's some technical aspect. So what the tactical does is give context to the technical. Okay. 
it makes looking at it that way around makes the, te- the the tactical teaching easier, more productive, and more relevant. The word we're going to come back to. And when you're talking is historically, when I'm talking to um, coaches from the sixties and seventies, uh, technique was always secondary. So this 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 principle was kind of unproblematic. You know, I want to bring this up because I do think there are aspects to this that um, can help move tennis from being stuck in just this technical focus. But yeah, they, they, they do. It's, um, it, it, it's interesting that um, the tactical was, was, much more, was much more salient. Only looked at, yeah, so a lot of sessions I do see when I'm, when I'm, when I'm coaching the coaches and doing, doing those, um, those kind of days that we, we, we get locked into that, the tactical thinking, which leads into, it, I think, an inflexibility. I mean, the questions, why should I hit the ball like this? Why should I strike the ball like this? You know, the, these, tactical, these tactical questions are best answered because what you want to be able to do is provide the answer because it increases your chances of winning the point. It's not simply a context-less um, stroke than hitting the ball. So technical coaching requires tactical context. We're simply not saying that all ta- tactical coaching is bad. It's like we, we would, um, <laughs> yeah, well you can't say that <laughs> because it's not, it's not true. We were having discussed recently on the difference between um, reception, receiving skills and delivery skills where much more closely tied to delivery skills and that's what a lot of coaches will, will fo- and, and players uh, focus on and stay, that's what they see as, pro- as uh, the problem. Let's have a look at the first principle. The reason it's the first principle, it, it, there is a reason. There is a reason that 70, 20, 10, um, ATP, let's say down to club, there are different variations of that, but that's roughly what's, what the principle says. That this is um, number one. It's where, it's where a lot of the data comes from and it's a, it's, it's a problem that, or, or, or a challenge that's it's, it's almost inescapable. That is what happens in the match. Hence, it's a perennial problem. Why is it a problem? Because most players want to be here. That's how they see tennis. They literally, that's how they see tennis. So that's what gets replayed when you're watching matches. That's kind of like the propaganda side of tennis. That's what it should be, nine plus. We we will remember the nine pluses. Hence you get people saying I'm more consistent. Look, there's lots of aspects to 70, 20, 10. We look at this much more in in, in a lot of detail um, in the first strike series in the Arts of Winning. Um, Particularly on the membership site, we actually have a specific course and we're constantly developing first strike skills and games and the fundamentals of um, the first, the, your first two shots in a, in a match, so one to four. So we're focused on here in the art of winning. And it's also, yeah, it's the closest we can get to, a, 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 to the science, to data. You can, get really, you can really get into this. And it really helps anchor, anchor what we're doing. And you've got very productive results making positive result making discussions based on that framework. If you frame the, uh, the problem or the challenges in this way. Um, and that's the, if we take this, let's see, here's the, the problem of repetition. So rallying and, rallying and, um, and extended drills practice. Um, not necessarily disruptive in, their self, in themselves, but again, they're like, they're like the heuristics. They can very much work against you because we see um, the problem of repetition is a problem of seeing or not seeing the problem. It's a problem of not seeing what the problem is. Because I, we, we, you know, we're, we're, we're locked into this idea in terms of that that's the way it should be, that's the way it is, that's the way it is at ATP level. That's what happens, but well, we know it doesn't. 
but that's what we think it does. So what we then do is we go onto the court, we go, oh, I need to get more consistent. Let's hit 100 balls and repeat and repeat and repeat. So that's, that's principle number one. Okay, let's go. Still have a problem. It's more technique, more repetition. So look, I still got a problem, my back and it doesn't work. So I go to the coach, I gotta work on more, more technique. Um, I've got a quantitative problem because I'm not hitting enough balls, I'm not playing the right players, I won't. Well, these, these, these quantitative problems result in more repetition. Um, but then I, I go back into the match, look, I still got this problem, then I go back into here, let's do some more of it, more repetition, we haven't done enough. Let's have three lessons on it rather than one, and so on and so on, and it becomes a loop. So why is this? A problem. Perennial problem. So why is that th th this a problem apart from it being circular, possible waste of time and money and not really addressing the problem? Well, there's another aspect to it. Uh, it doesn't address, uh, it cannot address uh, the perennial problems. Isn't that, isn't that sad? So we have perennial problems. And the two big perennial problems in tennis, no they're perennial, uh, not just perennial plants, like year long, they're, they're ever present. Um, and we have unapprehendable margin, a rhythmic rhythm. So these are the perennial problems. Unapprehendable uh, margin in tennis, we're going to look at that in more detail in the next lecture, we're going to get, sorry, after we've been tennis. Um, a rhythmic rhythm. So what is it that competitive intelligence can do um, as a psychotechnology? What can it, how can it help us? So, 70%, one to four, five to eight, and 10, yes, um, nine plus. So what it does, I think, as a psychotechnologist, it flips um, the technical repetition mindset that you find in uh, thinking about it being consistency, susceptible to the propaganda that you see of tennis and, and the way it should be. So this is all in the nine plus area, which only makes up ten percent. What we want to do is flip it. the practice ball using the first strike games. So this is flipped back up here. So that mindset is changed into that one. That's the psycho technology we want. And it resides in the first strike games. That's, a, that's, that's the example and it kind of overcomes both of these, these perennial problems. And that, that included in here, I need to put in parasitic processing that we looked at in the previous lecture. Parasitic process. Right, these are the, the main perennial problems in tennis. Um, this is our, this, I, I, like, I like it because look, this is, that's the first strike against these problems. Um, in terms of a rhythmic rhythm, first strike contains, or the first strike contain, games contain um, an examination of the movement between, say, the serve and the S1, so the first and the second shot. It also deals with the, when we look at the momentum games, so we can add to those momentum games, address on that randomable margin. Um, and all the time they're, they're taking we're on the practice court, really kind of preparing ourselves to address the problem of parasitic processing. And then look, this is extremely exciting. I mean, it really is. I love it. It's changed my life, as they say. And it has because that's all, you know, these, these problems I know have always gone un unaddressed. I, I, um, I can't tell you how much we can help you with this.
and you can help players. It's um, it goes back to the the, the continuity, stability um, process that the art of winning players feel, because we are addressing the perennial problems that aren't addressed in the normal tennis on on the normal tennis practice court where we've got this this loop here, this quantitative problem of repetition. Um, so yeah, we go to the heart of those. So in that way, it's so transformative. I mean, I mean, wow, it, it, it's really, I'm, I'm so happy that I can at least have the chance to explain this to you. Every single player and coach who's used this, um, particularly with first strike, it says, but they say the same, it is transformative, hence transform the practice school. So uh, please get involved. And in the next two lectures, we're going to look at two of the perennial problems, which are arrhythmic rhythm um, and unapprehendable margin, being that we've already looked at parasitic processing, and the role of first strike and the momentum games in addressing perennial problems. So thank you very much for your time, and I will see you on the next lecture.